The Citizen Report is a production of New Shannon Media. All content protected under copyright. And welcome to the Citizen Report. I'm Jonathan Shannon, and thank you for joining me tonight. As always, this newscast is real, in-depth American. So glad everyone can join me for this broadcast. My co-host, David Heller, is off today. Well, I wanted to come to you with this message from John B. Wells. Now, I don't have any direct connections to John B. Wells, um, and I actually didn't get permission to play this soundbite, but I believe that um, I'm using it in good faith. It is from his show, Caravan to Midnight, just a few days ago. And he's talking about patriots who live in Democrat-controlled states and Democrat-controlled cities. Now, from what he, from, from his personal opinion and from what he's getting from other people, what you're about to hear, I think, personally, could be very, very credible. Because um, the Democrats, they are in, in the deep state, that is. Uh, more specifically, the deep state is in full panic mode right now because Trump, I think personally, uh, most likely Trump is poised to win the election, get a second term, and quite possibly win in a landslide. Now, the Democrats have been, and I will get to that soundbite in a second, but I'm just going to say this, that the Democrats in the deep state, they are projecting right now like we have never seen before. He, they're saying that Trump is trying to collude. He's trying to obstruct the U.S. Postal Service, for instance, when really it's the exact opposite. Because what's really at, what they're what's what they're talking about is uh, the Democrats in deep state. I mean, are these mail-in ballots? And these mail-in ballots, um, the Democrats are notorious for rigging that. Um, you know, stuffing the ballots, if you will, and um, but they're trying to project right now onto Trump when it is the, it, when it when they're the ones that either do it or falsely accuse otherwise. Um, and but I want to get to now that's not directly related to this soundbite, but I wanted to get to this soundbite from John B. Wells from his show Caravan to Midnight. He's warning patriots if you live in a Democrat controlled state or a Democrat-controlled city. You need to get out as soon as you can, if you can. Because if you live in a Democrat-controlled city, absolutely get out immediately. If you live in a Democrat-controlled state, leave as soon as you can, um, if you can. Because the Democrats, I think, I think that things will ultimately get better. But that's not to say that we won't see things first appear to get worse. And I say the word appear for a reason, because the patriots, they are in control. They are in con they are absolutely in control. It's like uh, David X-22 report says, that it's like a ch little child, you know, throwing a temper tantrum, throwing toys around. You know, you don't stop the child, you know, you might let the child play with, you know, the, t you know, the throw the temper tantrum, if you will. But at any point, the parent can step in, and they do step in to stop the child, right? Well, um, the deep state, the Democrats, they're going to continue to push on rest, and um, and I'm gonna get, I'm gonna turn it over to that soundbite. This is not just a single, um, you know, clip. I I put these clips together, and after after that, um, the series of sound bites, if you will from that episode after that finishes I will come back on and and we'll talk about it I was very tempted to go all the way to DEFCON 1 with this today but maybe next week we'll do I just want to um, I just want to point something out to you everyone should get out of Democrat states as soon as possible. You should get out of Democrat cities immediately. I know it will not be easy. You have time now. With all these restrictions and all this mask nonsense, you'll have plenty of time, but you must do it. All patriots, absolutely, if you can, 
If you can't, then you can't. If you can get out, do it. You have all been identified, and you have been numbered, and you are on the list. And yes, a list does exist. The last thing that I hear or read on this note is, you won't hear from me for a while. Okay? The storm is here. Tell the people to revolt by not complying, not staying, not buying from any of these hooligans. It's not going to be easy, but you have to do it if you want to survive what is coming. I really mean this. There's nothing in this for me to say this to you unless it is based in fact. And believe me, the blowback that I might receive, the ridicule, maybe even the lack of credibility, should this turn out to be just some sort of a false alarm, I wouldn't do that in any case. But most importantly, I would not spook you into believing something that was not true. If you can get out of dem states, do it. Do it this summer. You have the rest of August, you have September, and you have October. But be out of your Democrat-controlled states by the time the election gets here. And for very sure, get out of your Democrat-controlled city. Get away. Even if you don't get very far, at least go to a Republican-controlled city. I say again, they're not all lily white, but they're a damn sight better than the ones controlling the cities now. Under the umbrella of the blue, the blue umbrella. You've got to get out. You do. There is a huge, huge mess headed our way. I repeat, all patriots must move now. Do not fool around with this. I repeat, there's nothing in it for me whatsoever to spook you. No sense of power, no sense of relevance, no sense of influence, not one thin dime, nothing. It is a warning. Once I have warned you, it is on you. Get out of Democrat cities immediately. Get out of Democrat states as soon as possible. If you can get out of the Democrat state first, well, the city part will take care of itself. Do not spend any more money with these people. Nothing. Do not go for your favorite coffee drink. It's run by a leftist. Do not use certain telephone companies. They're run by leftists. Call and cancel your subscriptions to these various cable companies. Research and find out. It takes one minute to find out what organizations they support. Anybody that supports Black Lives Matter, anybody that supports the Democrat Party, anybody that supports Antifa, drop them. Call them and tell them, I'm dropping you because of your support for these groups. If they support both, that's not going to work either. Do without if you need to. It'd take about 30 days to send a message these mugs will never forget. Watch them lie to try and cover their tracks. You're smarter than they are. You're more intelligent than they are. Okay? You didn't decide that you were going to make a fortune by lying to people, deceiving them, putting them at a disadvantage. That's not what you did. I don't know you personally necessarily, but I'm pretty sure. I'm Actually, I'm very sure. You did not say, hmm. You know, I can really make a fortune by screwing a lot of people over, and I can make even more if they never find out about it. But I'm going to need some political cover. That's the Democrat Party. Ben Crenshaw of the Republican side is a problem. He's too sympathetic to tearing down monuments. I don't care. Get rid of this guy. Okay? I'm sure he's a nice man, but, out, but out, his politics to me belong over there with the leftists. This is our history, too, pal. When you want to get rid of the Alamo, one of my, well, one of my relatives, Private William Wells, his name's on the wall. You don't tear down my Alamo. My relative's name is on there. He died to keep Texas solid after Santa Ana crawfished a deal. Santa Ana made a deal with the Texicans, and then he went back on it and started killing them. That's what all totalitarians do. And Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana was most assuredly a totalitarian, and he got his AWS kicked by Sam Houston. Oh, we need to take his, uh, his statue down, too, because he's a white supremacist. Listen, folks, this white supremacy thing is not going away. This nonsense about racism is not going away. This, oh, we learned a, we learned a new word back in 2016. Want to hear it? Collusion. And now we've got another one. Um, um, uh, what is it? Oh, yeah, white supremacy. It's not going to stop. Misogyny, yeah, right. That didn't get much play. Racist, racist, racist. Everything is racist, racist, racist. They're liars. They're nuts. Politically, at least. Get out. Cut them off. Don't look back. Go live your life. Take that mask off. Go to church.
how long do you want to live with your head in a helmet? Now the moron idiot, I made a joke about goggles. Well, apparently some leftist was listening and told Fauci that might be a good idea, maybe goggles. So, again, you just heard from John B. Wells on his show, Caravan to Midnight, and I highly recommend you watch his show. Um, his news segment, which is what you were actually seeing an excerpt from, um, his news segment uh, from Caravan to Midnight actually is uploaded to YouTube. The rest of the show is on a uh, basically behind a uh, paywall, but I cannot recommend enough um, watching at least his YouTube channel, um, Caravan to Midnight, because he really, he has really good insights, and he does it, I believe, Tuesday to Fridays, and then Saturdays he has a, um, a radio broadcast, Arc Midnight, I believe, um, and that too is, um, well, Caravan to Midnight is not live streamed, it's produced and then released, but, Arc Midnight, the radio program on Saturday nights, is actually streamed live just as it goes out live on radio stations. Now, my personal views on this is that I'm not about fear-mongering, but I do believe that he has a, has a point there that if you are in a Democrat-controlled state, and especially and most definitely if you are in a Democrat-controlled city, you you're not in a good place because these Democrats, it's like that, like that child, like, you know, the analogy I mentioned, the child throwing a temper tantrum. They're going to continue to push events. They're going to continue to push false flags. They're going to continue to push all these things that they have right now um, up until the election and probably after the election too. And I think that um, we're only going to see things, we're going to really have to buckle, you know, buckle your seatbelts, folks. Um, buckle it down, buckle down the seatbelt hard because we're going to come in for a hard landing in November. But I do believe that God, well, <laughs> Bible says God's in control. Um, but I do believe the patriots under God are in control. And I believe that God is on the side of the patriots. I absolutely believe that. And I do not believe the, the Democrats will ultimately get through with what they want to do. But that's not to say the Democrats in the short run will, um, they could absolutely um, push events. And um, I don't know yet how credible this is, but I'm also hearing um, certain, certain things coming forward. As we mentioned, as I mentioned in the previous broadcast, um, as alluded to in a New York Times piece, that there was a basically a simulated, um, they basically sort of simulated the what if of potentially, and of course this is more or less um, alluded to more than anything, but basically California and I want to say the other two Pacific states, um, uh, that is to say Oregon and Washington state, um, they would threaten to leave the union. Now, a lot of people would say, yeah, say goodbye to the California. Well, I disagree with that respect of, respectfully. I, I wholeheartedly disagree. First of all, that would not be a lawful withdrawal from the union because you would basically be having a coup, um, having to, you know, basically the Democrats conducting a coup because I guarantee you, you have all the patriots, especially inland, inland parts of California, and not just inland parts of California, you have patriots everywhere. But, I mean, especially in the more conservative areas and also places like San Diego, right on the coast and right on the border with Mexico, I might add, there's, there's a lot of military people living there. And I truly do not believe that they would go for that. And I think that um, if the Democrats try to push that, they would fail. However, as I said, things will get better, but in the short run, at least appearance-wise, um, things might appear to get worse first before it gets actually, you know, appearance and otherwise gets better. However, I let me say this as well, that what we're watching right now is a show. We're watching a movie right now of, in, a, in, a, in a sort of a metaphorical sense. We're watching Trump basically coming forward and saying certain things <laughs> to provoke a certain response from the Democrats in the deep state. And I say Democrats, I'm not just saying 
I'm not exclusive. That's not mutually exclusive because you've got the 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 Republicans in name only or rhinos like um, Mitt Romney, John Kasich. I mean, what a couple of pathetic excuses for Republicans. I'm a registered Republican. I'm quite transparent about that, and I I'm very happy to see that right now. Trump is steering the Republicans in a better direction, actually having to do with American sovereignty, you know, less government intrusion. Actually, if you really think about it, government only exists by the consent of of we the people, of the governed. And, um, you know, that that's what, that's what Republicans are, uh, are supposed to be about, is limited government, um, as the Constitution mandates. But um, Trump is provoking a certain response from these people for a couple of reasons. One is to wake the people up. And, um, and also because in certain cases, I do believe it has also have something to do with revealing who the players are, who are the deep staters. Um, although I do believe with the NSA and others that they see that they, that they have the communications. They see what's going on behind the scenes. So, again, I will just say this, and again, I'm not fear-mongering. If you can't leave, that's fine, and you'll probably be okay, but I'm just saying, if you can leave um, a Democrat-controlled city or state, absolutely, but when you go to your new place, just be sure, to, if you happen to be a, um, you know, a former Democrat, let's say, that's waking up to what's really going on, leave your, please leave your, and I say this with all due respect, please leave your politics um, where you're leaving and, and embrace the, the free, the liberty of being self-governed under God in a better state. Um, and of course the constitution mandates the essence of that everywhere in this country. It doesn't matter where you are, but I'm just saying if you, if you're, if you've been voting Democrat, if you've been, if you, have you, if you have been, let's say a registered Democrat or a leftist, but you're waking up and you're realizing what's really going on. The, the, the real struggle right now with, with, um, with good versus evil, um, as I say, and I say this one more time, with all due respect, please leave your politics, leftist politics, in the failed areas that, you know, are seeing pretty much late stage communism starting to take hold in places like Chicago, um, I would say Illinois, but let's face it, Illinois has basically been hijacked by by Springfield, Illinois, the capital there, and or really, the, I should say, the state government of sorts, but especially Chicago, because so much of that state is actually, you know, just a you know nice state, you know, American state in the middle of the country, right? Well, you know, and you've got other places like San Francisco. Uh, Sacramento, Los Angeles, um, you know, New York State and city. I mean, wow. I mean, <laughs> if you want to see an example of what communism will do to, uh, in terms of being detrimental, just t look no further than, than New York City and New York State. I mean, wow. Um, and their, their response to COVID has been just diabolical, really. And I find it interesting, um, while I mention that, um, that they blame Trump for the things they're guilty of. But right now, as I'm recording this, as I'm taping this right now, um, last night, you know, to right now, from right now, last night uh, was the start of the Democrat National Convention. And here they are, they come on screen, and they talk about how Trump's done this, how Trump's failed on COVID. And I actually saw a uh, separate to that today, I also saw a Joe Biden ad run, and he basically was blaming Trump as, as to say he he's failed as you know on his response to COVID. Well, one thing I'll say to that is that government doesn't work that way. Government is separated; its powers are separated for a reason. They're supposed to be supposed to be more evenly distributed. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that um, the federal government has three branches of government, 
And I, I, I presume uh, pretty much in all cases, state governments also have three branches of government and they're equally distributed. Of course, the powers among those branches might vary somewhat in certain states, but, but just talking about the relationship with the federal government and the state government, the state is who is supposed to be acting with regards to COVID. Um, you know, these governors are making these decisions about how their state's going to respond and things like that. And you see states, state governors like Andrew Cuomo of New York State um, basically come, come forward and say in, you know, certain, in, in recent months and basically say, um, basically, because he, you know, it's his policies that basically kept certain people in nursing homes, if I'm not mistaken, who should not have been there. If, um, as I as 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 I understand it, he his policies basically kept uh, high risk people or COVID people in nursing homes, basically increasing their chances of death. You have Democrat governors who blocked hydroxychloroquine, and you had fake studies come out saying hydroxychloroquine is dangerous. And actually, um, as I as I remember, the, uh, I believe. Uh, X-22 report last night made mention of this, Switzerland for a time um, they had hydroxychloroquine then they stopped allowing hydroxychloroquine, then their cases or I, I'm not sure if it was cases it might have been death cases, I'm not exactly sure on that um, uh, it was last night's part B episode of his report but the, the numbers shot up and then as soon as they allowed hydroxychloroquine again, it went back down. So it basically proves, yet again, that hydroxychloroquine works. I've been saying it, other people have been saying it, but just for suggesting the notion, you risk getting taken off of social media. That is the kind of tyranny we're seeing right now. And that's the kind of stuff the Democrat governors are trying to deflect right now. Because they don't want to take own up to the responsibility of how their government has completely failed. They say that Trump has failed. They say that Trump needs to instigate a nationwide mask mandate. Well, first of all, you cannot legally do that. You cannot lawfully mandate nationally a mask mandate. And it's for the same reason that I say Real ID, you know, the, that was passed um, back in the 2000s. Um, um, Real IDs are basically federalized standards for for state issued identification, uh, uh, essentially, and that's unconstitutional because it's not they're forcing the state to do certain things that are just not right, and it's basically trying to federalize the ID. It's the same thing with mask mandates. You can't do that, and also and and moreover, you can't mandate masks anyway because. You have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Among these, as it states, among these are the um, the the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Now, people try to pervert the meaning of having rights right now by saying, "Well, you can't accost me by um, not wearing a mask." Well, I'm sorry. Excuse me. My, or I should say, your fear um, can't cannot accost me from having to do something to myself, um, you know, having to wear a mask that completely violates my conscience and my rights. It absolutely violates both my conscience and it violates my rights. And that this is the whole thing. We are in a struggle right now against, we are, well, I should say, we are fighting, we, you know, on the side of good, that is, the, the, the side of good is fighting evil. You know, good and evil are clashing right now on a level we have probably never seen before in this country, certainly not since the revolutionary times um, in the 1700s. And I just want people to understand, you need, if you still are asleep right now, if you still think this is just another election, you need to wake up and realize what's really going on here. The Democrats are essentially a communist organization. The Black Lives Matter is a terrorist organization. Antifa is a terrorist organization. Both are domestic terrorist organizations. The Democrat Party, in my humble opinion, 
especially as you factor in um, abortion and things of that sort, you um, basically are um, you're, you're, you 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 basically have become not just a communist organization but a terrorist organization. So people need to wake up and understand what's really going on here. We are in a fight right now to to keep America and restore our rights. And um, that's pretty much it for this broadcast. Um, um, and I thank you as always for joining me on the Citizen Report. I'm John the Shannon. And um, join me again next time on the Citizen Report. I'll be back next time as always. Have a great evening, everyone, and God bless each and every one of you. And I will see you right back here again next time. Have a great night, everyone.